Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Well, summer is finally upon us and so today I wanted to talk to you about the most important anti-aging product that you have on your vanity and that is sunscreen. You know, it doesn't matter how many tubes of Retin-A we go through, how many anti-aging products we buy from the grocery store, or Sephora or Ulta, the reality is that unless we use sunscreen every day, we are really shortchanging ourselves because sunscreen is truly the best anti-aging product that there is. And so today I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on some sunscreens and give you some recommendations on, on not only the type of sunscreen to look for, but how to apply it and um, when to apply it. And I just wanna say everybody should be wearing sunscreen every day. Whether you have light skin, medium skin, or dark skin, put on the sunscreen. Certainly people that are the fairest, like myself, are at the greatest risk for developing skin cancer. But everybody, including dark skin people, should wear sunscreen because anybody is at risk for skin cancer. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today are um, the two types of UV light. There's UVA and UVB. Um, both of these types of ultraviolet light can cause aging or photoaging, which is wrinkles, discoloration, hyperpigmentation, and of course, skin cancer. So when we are looking for sunscreen, the biggest thing that we wanna look for on the bottle is the word broad spectrum, because that tells us that both UVA and UVB rays are covered in that sunscreen. So I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Um, this sunscreen that I use, which is L to MD, says broad spectrum on it, as does this, um, where is it? Here it is, my CoverGirl makeup says broad spectrum on it. So as long as you see the words broad spectrum, you know that both UVA and UVB are covered. If you look at a package and it doesn't say broad spectrum, assume that it is not broad spectrum. It has to say it in order to be actually a broad spectrum sunscreen. So the two types of sunscreen that I wanted to talk to you guys about today are chemical and physical sunscreens. So chemical sunscreens uh, work by absorbing the rays of sun and examples of those are oxybenzone and octanoxate. Octanoxate covers UVB rays and oxybenzone covers UVA rays and a lot of the time you will see these ingredients on sunscreens that you buy no matter where you buy them. The other kind of sunscreen that we see um, in the stores are physical sunscreens, and these have the ingredients either titanium dioxide or uh, zinc oxide. And I'm sure you guys remember the days in the 80s where we wore the bright orange or the bright white sunscreen on our face, and when we called it zinc. Or if you think back to when our parents were kids and we see pictures of the, them of, on the beach and they're wearing that bright white sunscreen on their face. You know, back in the olden, in the olden days, my parents would kill me if they heard me saying that, Back in the 50s and 60s, and even in the 80s when I was a kid, you know, we just did not have great technology where sunscreen was concerned. And so we could see that sunscreen on our face. And I think that the compliance for wearing sunscreen was very low in those days because it was just not cosmetically pleasing. People didn't want to be wearing white streaks across their face unless they were at the pool or the beach. But today we have nanotechnology that has allowed us to have formulations of sunscreens that are clear on our face, even though they contain these ingredients, zinc, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So these, you know, this nanotechnology has really helped us um, help the cosmetic industry find ways for us to wear sunscreen under makeup and every single day without it being obvious that we are wearing sunscreen. So um, what are the recommendations when it comes to wearing sunscreen? Well, number one, as I said before, you want a broad spectrum sunscreen. Again, if the bottle doesn't say it, assume it's not broad spectrum. The second thing is that the American Academy of Dermatology recommends that you wear an SPF of at least 30 every day. So find a great sunscreen of at least 30 and make sure that you put it on every single morning underneath your makeup. The third thing is that you wanna find a great sunscreen that's got a combination of both chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens because that is gonna give you the best protection because you're getting some rays absorbed and some rays reflected. So the other thing about finding a combination sunscreen that's got both chemical and physical sunscreens in it 
is that it's probably the most cosmetically easy to work with. It's gonna be the one that you, you're gonna like the feel of it and you're gonna be happy to put that underneath your makeup. So those are my three top recommendations. What is the next way that you can protect yourself from the sun? Well, if you're gonna be at the beach or at the pool, I would recommend that you invest in some clothing that has um, pr sun protection in it. And some examples of that are I have this shirt from Athleta. It's like adorable. It has this zipper. And so you can, you know, zip it down or you can zip it up. It goes all the way to here. So it protects my chest from the sun. I'm gonna show you a couple more of those because I have many of them. Skin cancer actually runs in my family. My grandmother, who I have mentioned a number of times on this channel, died from melanoma, as did her father. So me and my dad and my sister and brother are all at very high risk for developing melanoma, which is why I really take the topic of sun protection so seriously because really it's a matter, a matter of life and death, not only in my family, but in many families across you know this country and across the world. So here's another swim top that's really cute, also from Athleta. And you can wear these with any bottoms. And my last example is just this really beautiful bright blue one. And again, it's just got a zipper, but it's long sleeve. You put them on, you don't need to put sunscreen under them. They zip up to here, they cover your arms. The other benefit of wearing a sun shirt is that your back doesn't get any sun. You know, my grandmother's melanoma was on her back and I think the back is such a hard place to detect melanoma because you know, we look at our arms, we look at our faces, we look at our abdomen and we can see if we have moles that are changing, if they're changing shape, if they're changing colors, if they're changing textures, but our back is the one part of our body that we can't do self-examinations on. We can't see our back. And so to me, it's, it's frightening that a melanoma could be developing on my back and I would never know about it. So, I like to wear these sun shirts because they cover up my back, which means that when I'm at the pool or the beach with my kids, I don't worry about my back. I know it's protected. No sun is reaching it. And the other benefit of these shirts is that I'm sure you guys have had this experience. Like when I was younger and I wasn't as vigilant about sun protection, I would lather my body with sunscreen, but there was always a spot that I would miss, you know, like right along my near my armpit or right along my bikini top. And inevitably that area would end up getting burned. So today my new routine is just to wear these sun shirts. You know, I can't cover up my neck and my face, obviously although I wish I could. And so I put, you know, SPF 50 plus on my neck, my face, the back of my neck, and I always wear a hat. This hat is the one I've been wearing this summer and it's adorable, I love it. I will link some cute hats for you guys below. Um, and the reason that I like this is because it's got kind of a big rim. So you wanna find a hat that's got a big rim that um, will shade your shoulders, your ears, because ears, believe it or not, I do a ton of plastic surgery uh, reconstruction from uh, skin cancer removals. I do that every week. Um, with a plastic surgeon. And uh, you would be amazed at how many times we have very, very um, severe skin cancers on the ears that require reconstruction of the ear because of skin cancer. So you wanna make sure to wear a hat that's got a rim all the way around it so that you're protecting your ears and it's as much of your neck and face as possible. I think that would be better than a baseball cap, but certainly at least with a baseball cap, you're getting a little bit of protection of your face. Um, so that is my spiel on sun protection clothing and hats. The next thing I wanted to talk to you in terms of recommendations is if you were gonna be at the beach or um, at the pool, wear a sunscreen that says on the bottle water resistant because that will last you in the water or with heavy sweating about one and a half to two hours. But if you are at the beach or the pool, make sure you are reapplying your sunscreen every one and a half to two hours. We have all had that experience where we're having so much fun and we forget to reapply our sunscreen and we get burned. So be really vigilant about reapplying that sunscreen every one and a half to two hours. And then the, the kind of the question becomes when we are not at the beach and when we're just doing our everyday routine, is the recommendation still to reapply sunscreen every one and a half to two hours? And it is, but that becomes difficult because are we really gonna lather sunscreen on our faces over a fully made, you know, made up face of makeup? And the answer to that is no. So I have been, you know, with my, always focus on sun care with myself. I've been thinking about ways that I can protect my skin when I'm wearing makeup. 
And the one solution that I've come up with you might have seen in a recent haul is this Color Science Sun Forgettable Broad Spectrum SPF Powder. And I have been wearing this lately and I really think this is the best solution for every day when you're not in, in, at the pool or the beach. Because when you're at the pool or the beach, how much makeup are you wearing? You can easily reapply a cream sunscreen. But for every day, you know, if you're, let's say you have an indoor job and at the end of the day, you're leaving your office. Before you walk outside, take this with you in your purse. <clears throat> it's super easy to apply. You just put it down. You sh I shake it down a little bit to get some of the product into the, the fibers of the brush. And then I just put it all over my face, all over my neck. And I feel comfortable going out into the sun into my car where there are going to be UV rays. Um, P.S. Like when you're in your car, it's UVB rays do not get through your car windows, but UVA do. So I think I'm getting that right. I'm pretty sure it's the UVA rays that can go through your window. So even when you are in the car, you are getting some degree of UV radiation. I am going to link below a picture of a truck driver that was taken. Obviously, he was a truck driver. He was driving in his truck many, many hours a day. But just for the purposes of making a point, I'm going to link this picture of this gentleman below. Please look at it. You see that the left side of his face is completely aged from the, those UV rays going through his window. And the right side of his face is dramatically different because it was not exposed to those UV rays. So check out that link below. So... When you get into your car after work, you still want your skin protected. If you're gonna go to soccer games with your kids, if you're gonna go to any sport activity with your kids, if you're gonna be walking around anywhere outdoor, to the grocery store, to shopping, to running errands, you still wanna have sun protection. And I think that this is the answer. There are several brands that do these powders. <clears throat> I will link them below. This is the only one that I own, but so far I'm very pleased with it and I highly recommend it. I think it's very transportable easy to put in your purse and carry around with you to apply when you are leaving work every day. Um, so what are the concerns where SPF is, is concerned? You know, I am on Facebook and I see all the time articles that are posted about how you're like lathering your kids in poison when you're putting sunscreen on them. And my personal feeling about that is that, you know, skin cancer is a known risk of sun. There is, you know, years and years of good data, of good research that shows that skin cancer is a result of sun exposure. All of the concerns that people have about sunscreen are valid concerns, but none of them are proven concerns. So I'm gonna go through some of those with you now. Hopefully I'll allay some of your concerns where sunscreen is, con is where sunscreen is concerned. So um, one of those is nanoparticles. You know, there is some question as to whether nanoparticles are able, because they are so small, to go through the skin surface and into your body. There has been a lot of research that has shown that it does not do that um, because our skin is intact. And because our skin is intact, those nanoparticles are not gonna be able to get through our skin. But that research is inconclusive. Again, I am willing to take that risk because skin cancer is proven. The question about nanoparticles is still in question, not proven yet. So where I'm concerned, I still wear the sunscreens. I don't think about nanoparticles or I try not to think about nanoparticles. And I, um, you know, just kind of try to put that out of my mind. Another concern with wearing sunscreen is skin irritation. There are some people that complain that the chemical sunscreens um, irritate their skin, lead to acne. And I'm sure that there are some people that this does happen to. So there are two recommendations. If you are a person that feels that their skin is, you know, getting a little bit acne prone because they're using chemical sunscreens, I would recommend two things. When you are through with your exercise or activity or taking your makeup off at the end of the day, do a double wash use a makeup remover and then also wash it once or twice with a great skin cleanser to make sure that you're getting all of that sunscreen off of your face to prevent acne. And secondly, I would recommend using benzoyl peroxide at night after you've used a lot of sunscreen during the day and that can help prevent acne from forming. Um, the chemical sunscreens are more likely to cause skin irritation than the physical sunscreen. So if you are a person that just does not tolerate the chemical sunscreens, go for the physical sunscreens that contain either zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. 
Vitamin D is also a question with sunscreen. Some people believe that if they wear sunscreen, they're not going to absorb their vitamin D. There is no evidence to suggest that wearing sunscreen is going to um, inhibit you from properly absorbing and converting vitamin D, from getting the sun you need to have proper absorption and conversion of vitamin D. If for whatever reason you are vitamin D deficient, which many of us are, myself included, it is very safe to take a vitamin D supplement. So I kind of think you can get the best of both worlds. You can wear the sunscreen if for whatever reason you are a person that has um, low vitamin D, go to any store and get a vitamin D supplement and then you will take care of that concern. There's also been some questions as to hormonal effects with sunscreens. That's another thing that is inconclusive. The research has not shown definitively one way or another whether or not hormones affect are affected by sunscreen. But again, where I'm concerned, I feel like there's plenty of evidence that skin cancer is caused when you don't use sunscreen. So I kind of choose to put these kinds of things aside and wear the sunscreen anyway. So the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video are, you know, makeup options and some sunscreen options. Many of our makeup brands say that they contain SPF. What I have noticed from looking at my own makeup is that most of the SPF that I have in my foundations are SPF 20. And I have two kind of issues with them. They do say broad spectrum and they do say SPF 20. Like this CoverGirl one is broad spectrum SPF 20. This... Um, Rimmel Lasting Finish one is also broad spectrum and SPF 20. And this Bobbi Brown one is not broad spectrum, but it's SPF 35. Um, and also here's another one. The Tarte one is broad spectrum SPF 15. So the reason that I bring this up is because I want you guys to um, take note that the SPF in those, it, with the exception of the Bobbi Brown one, are less than 30. And so even though you are wearing those, you're still not wearing, if you're wearing that without sunscreen, you are still not wearing SPF 30. And remember, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends that we wear an, at least an SPF of 30. So what I would recommend is wearing sunscreen on your face, underneath your makeup, and then just consider the SPF that's in your makeup as a bonus. You're getting a little bit more sunscreen on your face. So what are some great sunscreens to use? Well, my favorite that I've ever used is this Elta MD. And the reason that I like it is because it's SPF 46. I'm gonna hold it up close here. As you see, it says broad spectrum. And this is, this Elta MD is a combination of both physical and chemical sunscreen. So I'm getting a little bit of both, which improves not only my protection, but it also is, makes it really, really good to wear under makeup. It's a great formulation. It's super easy to wear under makeup. It doesn't affect my makeup at all. Um, I have not noticed any problems with flash photography with this. And lastly, it contains an ingredient called niacinamide, which is actually an anti-acne ingredient. And because my skin is acne prone, um, I love this because it doesn't cause any um, breakouts and it just works beautifully. Many dermatologists office carry this and you can also get it at Derm Store. So as I've mentioned many times on my channel, Derm Store often has a 20% off coupon or a 20% off sale going on. So you can get this at 20% off and I think it's about $35 for the tube. So $35 plus 20% off is not a bad deal. So um, this is also good for people with rosacea or hyperpigmentation because of that niacinamide in it. So I love this product. If you wanna spend a little bit less, you can go for something like this Cetaphil. This Cetaphil compared to the Elta MD is less expensive. However, it does have a little bit of a white cast. So if you, you will not notice it under makeup, but if you were using flash photography, you might notice this. Um, but it does meet the requirements of, um, oh my gosh, this does not say broad spectrum but I am looking at the back at the ingredients and it does have both chemical and physical ingredients in it. But I have to say, I'm not impressed Cetaphil that this does not say broad spectrum. I can't recommend this because it doesn't say broad spectrum. 
Go to the drugstore, Neutrogena. There are lots and lots of drugstore brands that will say broad spectrum SPF greater than 30 at very affordable prices. They may be a little bit less friendly where flash pho photography is concerned, but how often do we really worry about that? Not that often. So um, I hope that this little talk about sunscreen gave you guys a very clear picture of what you need to look for when you are shopping for sunscreen and how you can protect your skin from the harmful rays of the sun, avoid photo aging, avoid wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, and most importantly, how to avoid skin cancer. Wear that sunscreen every single day, you guys. I hope that you are having a great day. I hope that you learned something useful from this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this and I will see you next time. Bye. As an addendum to this video, you guys, I wanted to let you know the information that I shared with you was obtained from a database that is only accessible to healthcare professionals called UpToDate. I will link UpToDate's website below just so that you can learn a little bit about them. UpToDate is a group of doctors and scientists who are constantly updating, and therefore the name UpToDate, um, their database of information on every single medical topic you could think about. So it's always current, and you can always look up the most current recommendations on any medical topic. Again, unfortunately, is only accessible to medical professionals, but I wanted to share the information from UpToDate with you. Um, another great resource for sun care information is on the American Academy of Dermatology's website. I will link that for you below as well. Take care, you guys.